Hi, this video is to help you better understand a couple of uh, things about using the position property in CSS. Uh, namely, we'll be looking at position fixed, position relative, and position absolute. And I've got this picture here in which I'm using um, those three positions. So one thing to notice is these social uh, links down here. Uh, they are in a fixed position, so they're using position fixed. Um, and what that means is that as I scroll, they are going to stay in this position. And I've positioned them at the bottom left, and I'll look at the code in a minute that does that. But that keeps them in that position no matter how the user scrolls. They'll always be there. Now, position fixed is different. I'm sorry, that was position fixed. Position absolute is different. Position absolute just says you are going to be fixed within your container. So position fixed is fixed relative to the whole web page, the whole window, whereas position absolute is only fixed within a container. So I have a container here, I actually have two. These flowers constitute the container. I've used a background image for those these two containers. And the containers are relative. And so by making those relative, I can use absolute to position this picture, um, this picture div within the div that has the background image. So that's a little confusing with the language, but I want you to see the code and how you can use position relative together with position absolute to be able to write things on top of pictures or on top of any, on top of a video, on top of some other text. It's a way that you can uh, anchor something within a contain within another container. So I have this 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 picture div anchored within this image div, and I have two examples here. I'm also going to show you the code for if you are interested in improving the look of your fonts. So the fonts that you get by default with the browser, they work fine, but they're not very clear, really. They have some, um, they're just not as structured as clearly. But you can get free fonts from Google Fonts and, and add them and use CSS to style your pages using those, and you'll get a, a nicer looking font out of that. So this is a little more advanced video, but I think many people are curious about the difference between the position fixed, absolute, and relative, and how you use them. So that's what this is about. So the code that I use to write this is in a website called Repolit. And this is a free site. You can join it. It's a place, I think, to kind of play around in. So it's repl.it. And you can create many different kinds of uh, projects with it. When you sign up, you know, you'll get an account, and all of your projects will be online, and you can share them and whatnot. Now, the thing is, we can't use this for our class because it doesn't integrate with GitHub. But it kind of keeps things running and online and shareable. So if I wanted to create a web project, um, I just kind of click on this all languages. And then, um, let's see, all languages. It takes me, it, it, you can do a, a lot of different languages in it. And then I would pick for the web the HTML, CSS language. And this gives me a basic setup, index, script, and style to start kind of playing around. It also names it. You can see it named it Lone Few Megahertz. Well, if you don't like the name it gives you, you can change the name. So you can just come in here and change the name. So this is how you get a project going that produces the, a page like this. So I just wanted to share that. Um, so here I am in my project. And what I've set up here is um, it, it came with the style sheet linked. Um, and you can see I've added font awesome. And that's giving me these fonts down here, these um, that you see inside of these social links. Um, and then I also has given me, Google, I've also linked in Google APIs, um, a specific family K2D. And I'll look at that in a minute. So that's what gives me this, this font that you see here. 
So all that I have for the structure of this page is I have my social links, which I've just got three um, anchor tags here. So there, there's that's all that I have uh, done to create those. And then Font Awesome has its own classes that produce different um, icons, and they do it through CSS. So by just saying FA, it's saying Font Awesome, and then in particular the Instagram font. Uh, the LinkedIn font and the YouTube font. So there's a whole bunch of fonts and you can Google uh, W3Schools social links to see more about that. Um, and then I've got them horizontal and we'll look at the CSS that does that. And then we'll also look at how we get them anchored down at the bottom of this page. For the two pictures, I just basically have uh, two divs and I'm calling one is pick one and one is pick two and then they have some some uh, property styles in common that are in pick. And so, and then within that, I have a photo title. And this is where I'm putting the text for how I'm naming these. Now, you could put links in there, you could put paragraphs, but um, I'm just going to use a div. So I've got this nested div. The parent to picture one text is this div with pick, pick one. So take a moment to look at that, the structure here. So we, and, and notice I don't have to put my social down at the bottom of the HTML itself to have it end up at the bottom of the web page because I do that with CSS. So let's take a look at the CSS now. And um, starting at the top, well, all of this code, and you can get this from W3Schools, like I said, is all about adding the font awesome, styling the font awesome. So with, with icons, you can style them just like, just like you style um, text or, or anything else. Um, so you can give them colors and backgrounds. And so that's what those styles are about. And then this social class, this is just saying position fixed. And again, when you say fixed, you're talking about you're going to anchor it, you're going to put it somewhere on the page, and it's going to stay there no matter what the user does in terms of scrolling. So fixed. And bottom zero, so I'm just saying, you know, have it zero, you know, pixels up from the bottom, and left zero, have it way over here on the left. And then I've created some margins on it. And this Z index is necessary so that it always stays on top and you'll learn about z-index, but it's like a layering effect, and you have like 0 to 9,999 9, or something. And so as long as, so whatever, is, whenever you assign a number z-index to a container, it's going to be placed, stacked sort of 3D relative to that number. So if I were to create something that was 100 z-index, it would be on top of this um, this. And in fact, like if I take away the Z index, so let me just comment that out and run it, you'll see that what happens is the Z index, the, this social links is now behind this picture. So the Z, but by putting the Z index in there, I guarantee that it's always going to be on top of the picture. Um, and now the pick, remember I said each each one of these pictures had two classes. It has pick, and that I'm just using to set uh, margin, height, and width. Um, and notice I've got the height at 400, but I'm saying the width is auto. So I'm trying, that will help me to keep the resolution. I won't get a stretched out picture or, or anything funny looking there. But then pick one and pick two, they're very similar really. Um, they and I'm using the background. So I have this picture out in, um, this is just a photo that I've loaded up on another website. You could be getting this from, from many places. Um, and it's just a URL that, it's an absolute URL, um, absolute reference to a photo out on the web. And I've just made it the background for the pick one and then the no repeat and cover will keep it from, you know, it, the tendency for pictures when it gets to its natural size. To, if it hasn't filled up the container, it will just repeat itself. And then cover to have it spread itself out across the container. 
And then notice I gave it position relative, and that's because my picture container is going to be the parent of this div that holds the title of the picture. And so relative is used to kind of take this photo out of the, you know, and make a place where you can create um, absolute positioning within it. And here's a link in here to um, to this to a description of this trick. It's called absolute positioning inside relative positioning. And this little article describes exactly what I'm doing here, and it gives some additional examples. And this is something that you'll see uh, developers use. Um, so, and, but it's not obvious how that would work until you've seen it demonstrated. And it also, I think this helps you to see the difference between fixed and absolute, which when I first heard about those two, I thought, what could possibly be the difference? It sounds like the same thing. But the reality is, is that you can't have an absolute position in the normal flow. It has to be inside of something that is not static. And remember, static is the default normal flow. We don't usually even assign position static. It is the default. But you can't just make something absolute within that. So we, we contain it in something relative or otherwise non-static. But absolute, we can just use right off the bat, and it's going to be set up uh, essentially against the window, not against any container. So the title, a little more about that. I'm using a couple of things here. We saw this in module uh, three, I think. Module, yeah, where you can use a little bit of opacity so that I've set this 255, 255, 255, which is white, but I've made it a little opaque so that you can kind of see through the picture, you know, and I could make that even more opaque. You know, let's see. So even lighter colored, but something so that this words can stand out in the picture. Because if I just took that off altogether, when you have words just sitting on a picture, let's take a look at that. Um, it can get pretty unreadable. You can see it kind of gets lost down there. And if it was on top of something that happened to be really dark, it might not be seen at all. So. I put this um, on an opaque background um, that is a contrasting color. Uh, and I aligned it to the right. I put some padding. And then notice I gave it position absolute. So it's sitting there inside this, this picture div. And then once I do that, I can give it a left and a bottom. So that gives me, that positions it within this picture down on the bottom left. And uh, I also use this border sizing border box, and you'll read about that. Um, it have, fits in with the box model and how we add up space, and it's used by a lot of developers just across the board because what it does is that the, as the browser is calculating the sizes of things, it will use border and padding to, as part. Of, if I if I say something has a width or a height. Um, it will count the border and padding as part of that, rather than having that be additional. So, so instead of just when I, if I just say width or height, that might that would by default just be the contents width or height. But if I set box sizing border box, then the padding and border get counted in that, and it keeps you from having things like overflow. So let's take a look at what would happen if I was to comment this out. So let's see. Um, let's just put a comment around that whole thing. You notice how it, it overflowed because when it's doing its counting, it's not figuring in that it's going to be that the size has to include some padding um, and um, any borders. In particular, here we, I've got some padding. So let's take that out. Oops. And comment back there. So now it should be back to counting it correctly. So these are kind of non-obvious little, I almost think of them like tricks in CSS that I, I just want you to be aware of. 
Finally, looking at the um, font family. So this is how I'm getting my special font, and this comes from Google Fonts. If you go out to Google Fonts, so let's see, out here. So just fonts.google.com. They provide a number of really good quality fonts, and they're free. And you can kind of look through them and pick out ones that you like. And then you just kind of click on this, select this font. And you'll see it goes down here. And I, now I've got two selected, because the one I used, K2D. Um, and then um, there's this Oswald font. So basically all you have to do to use these fonts is grab the link to it and then you will put that in your index.html so that it gets read in kind of like reading in a CSS file and then in your CSS you just specify it in the font family so that's all you have to do um, and like I use this uh, k2d font and if you look back here you can see that in my index html I have this link reference I just copy and pasted it from Google Fonts. And then um, in my style sheet, I just added font family K2D sensory. So that's this is just a few lessons here on little things that are not obvious. It would probably take a lot of reading and research to, to kind of come up with these on your own. And I just wanted to make you aware of them so that you can kind of use these techniques if you if you have this idea that you want to have something and write something over on top of it, this is how you can do it. All right. Well, I hope that helps.